it's great being able to walk out of your front door of a holiday cottage here in Kettlewell and get straight out onto the hill at 8 o'clock in the morning. Stunning this morning. Anyway, this morning I'm going to try and get up onto Great Wernside, which is the biggest hill around here. It's not too far, it's about just about five miles from, to the top from here. And, uh, and then about uh, eight miles walk to Grassington, further down Wharfdale, where I shall meet my wife and we'll have a little nosy around the shops there. Anyway, let's get cracking. Let's get up the top of that hill. We've come up this track, Topmere Road, out of Kettlewell. This is an area of amazing scenic beauty now, but uh, just a few hundred years ago, it was completely ravaged by mining. The hillsides would have been grey, heaps of stones. I don't know whether they had fires. You know, I once, uh, I once read a book uh, by George Burroughs, uh, written in the, about 1750, and he walks from uh, Norwich to North Wales, Anglesey, and then down to South Wales. And it's quite interesting how he describes. Uh, the scene when he gets to South Wales he says that uh, there's no green anywhere all the hillsides are black with dust from the furnaces and uh, at night everywhere's on fire just burning glowing red and it is just hard to believe uh, now in these times how things have changed Squelchy along here though. Bit of frost here. <laughs> First bit of frost I've seen this year. It's cold up here. Not too far from the top now. But uh, I'm gonna put my gloves on. It's uh, can't be far off freezing now. Brilliant, great views.
see from one side of the country to the other. Yeah, that is a lovely top. Not too difficult to reach either. It's really nice along here. Especially when the weather's like this. This is a different view now. This, we're on another side of uh, the hill and we're looking down towards uh, Scar House Reservoir. Now I'm following the uh, boundary fence down there across that moor and then turning right when we get to a footpath. So, pretty good views. Some tough uh, three, four miles maybe across the uh, mostly trackless terrain, up and down, wet bogs. It didn't come over my boots, but pretty tough going, not that easy. Hopefully, this is the uh, footpath I've been uh, waiting to come across, and uh, we'll be turning right here, dropping down the valley. Should be easy going from now on instead of up and down through all these bogs. Blimey. Let's check my, check my phone. Check my map. See as, uh, see as we are in the right spot. And then we'll drop down the valley. Down, 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 down to Grassington. Not too far now. Whew. Yes, that's it. We are in the right spot. Right, I think I might sit here, have a drink of water, might have a little bit of snap. Oh, I need a little bit, need a rest for 10 minutes. <laughs> God. This is some little shelter this is. It's very old, it's it possibly be, could be uh, like a shepherd's shelter. It's kind of like those beehive shelters uh, in the Hebrides. Now we're getting down now, getting down out of the wind, nearly down to the river. There's a building here, looks like that was probably something to do with the uh, mining that they did here. And there's some old mining buildings on the other side of the river there. And But there's two little buildings here, one here, one there. They look like they could have been uh, 
barns uh, for sheep years ago and they've all collapsed. Possibly a house but they look more like a, a barn. This is in excellent order, this building. No idea what it might be, but there's a lot of uh, grouse shooting goes on around here, and the grouse butts are all in perfect condition, all nicely numbered, there's lots of them. Could possibly be something to do with uh, the grouse shooting, uh, posh grouse shooting. Put and that's like the clubhouse have your drink something to eat pretty damn good Too much further to go now, just over this uh, little bit of uh, moor here and uh, we should be able to see Grassington and then we'll be dropping down to Grassington. Oh, I'm so thirsty, I need a pint. Come on, let's go. Here's an old farmhouse with a barn on the end. Let's take a look into the past. It's in good condition. Well, it's still standing anyway. It's like a reception area here, probably storage and uh, had a copper pot there probably where they've done the washing through this narrow corridor gosh you've got to duck down to get through there and into the main main room kitchen as the uh, fire which would have been <laughs> Probably modern, added after, well after the house were built. And uh, I remember I had a, a great great aunt on my dad's side that lived opposite my mum's grandma, the oldest person I ever knew. And she was probably born in the late 1800s and her husband was alive as well. And they were still using the copper in the corner like that and they were still cooking. This was when I was a young child and they were still cooking on a fire like this. And I remember sitting there, swinging the pot over the fire to boil the water. I don't know how she was pretty old when I was a young child. And uh, the toilet was a bucket to, in an outhouse, a soil bucket in an outhouse. A little cupboard there. Blimey, he had to duck down to get under these into these rooms. It's all been refloored at some time. It's got a new uh, floor. In fact, this is a new beam as well. And there's another fireplace there. That's a bit posher. This is like a living room. 
and a well this is like a a larder pantry or something in there possibly and then we've got some stairs I mean it's got all new boards on the floor upstairs so we'll risk it for a biscuit and have a look up here the whole building's been completely re-roofed at some time all new timbers I spoke to a farmer earlier in the week and there was this big hall and I said well what are you gonna what, what can you possibly do with that he said nobody's lived in it for 60 years but the uh, National Trust own it and they keep having ideas but the access it would just cost millions to put in an access road so nothing's ever done with it and it's just kept watertight like this place bit open at that end there right let's get down There's a nice mushroom there. I've had a look underneath, the gills are white. So it's not a field mushroom that you can eat. It's a beauty. Now this is an interesting structure here. I kind of wondered what it was. And uh, I think it may have been a sheep dip. I, I don't know, but they could have put them in, in at that end and it was full of water and whatever and then uh, they pushed them through here and dragged them out there I mean or maybe they dropped them in there and then they climbed up and went out the other side I don't know what else it could have been sheep dip anybody got any ideas We've come all the way down from the high moorland of Great Wernside and now we're in the pasture land surrounding Grassington. Such a difference and it's been downhill all the way from the top of Great Wernside just about. Bit of up and down. Not far to go now. I keep saying that but it uh, shouldn't be too far. Made it to Grassington. About 15 mile walk. Of course, Grassington's a really lovely little village. Beautiful. Especially when the sun's shining like this. And that's the end of the walk. We'll catch you on another one. Cheers. <laughs>